how can we see and explain piston to valve clears? The best way? Take it apart, look inside, and see for yourself. Hello everybody, I'm Richard Holder, and as always, welcome to the channel. I am at West Tech Performance, and today it's all about piston to valve clearance. The question is, how can I best demonstrate it? How can everybody see it and understand it? I've got an idea. If only there was a way to look inside and see what's happening when the piston goes up and down, or when the valves go up and down. You know it would be great. What if we could pull off part of the cylinder head? Like this. What if we could pull off part of the block? Like this. Now we can look in and see exactly what's happening. In this video, we're going to take a look at piston to valve clearance. And because we've sectioned our cylinder head and we've sectioned our block, we're going to talk about three different aspects. The first being, what is piston to valve clearance? What are we actually talking about? And I'm going to be able to demonstrate that because we can look right in and see it. The next thing is the danger zone, the danger zone for the intake valve and the danger zone for the exhaust valve relative to piston position. Again, we're going to be able to look right in there and show you exactly what I'm talking about. The final thing is valve lift. I get asked all the time, Richard, how much lift can I run with the available piston to valve clearance? And I'm gonna show you again, very evident, why valve lift has very little to do with piston to valve. But before we can do any of that, we need to take a look at our display motor and I have a couple of shout outs. Okay guys, the first of our three shout outs goes to the guys at ATK High Performance. That's right, they supplied our display motor, which is awesome. Now I've run a number of ATK motors here at West Tech Performance in the past. They're usually for the other editors back when I was doing the magazine stuff and I usually did all the testing, but I've run a number of their motors, small blocks and LSs and various things, and they've all worked very well. We reached out to them and they were nice enough to supply us our display motor, which is an aluminum 5.3 block, which is awesome, especially since they knew what we were going to do it. Due to it, it also had a crankshaft, a connecting rod, a piston, and rings to stabilize the piston. So when we're measuring piston to valve clearance, it all works out the way it should. Shout out to the guys at ATK. Thanks for our display motor. Another shout out goes to Mark Sanchez and Troy Goldie of West Tech Performance for hacking and slashing on both the aluminum block and the cylinder head. Now they used a sawzall on the block and then we took the cylinder head over to Acufab and Mark sliced it up using a bandsaw. And I've got some video of that, so let's check it out. So the head has been sectioned, thank you, Mark Sanchez, but it still doesn't allow us quite the view in that we want. So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna trim off these edges to allow us a little better access in there when we're looking at piston to valve. To do that, we're gonna use this. So I spent some time knocking the edges down. You know, I just wanted to be able to see in there a little bit better. So I cut a little bit in front of the intake valve, cut a little bit in front of the exhaust valve, and then wound up using a cartridge roll to smooth everything out. And here's how the little bit of porting actually turned out. The final shout out is actually to Brian over Brian Tooley Racing for supplying this camshaft for this demonstration motor. Actually, he didn't even know it was going in this motor. This is a red hot cam that I used at a previous test. It was sitting out, it was not in a motor. So I grabbed the Brian Tooley Racing red hot cam and slid it in here so that we could take a look and demonstrate piston to valve. 
Now we can talk about our display motor, our aluminum 5.3. Obviously we've sectioned the head and we've sectioned the block, but I made a few other changes. We used the stock rockers and the stands and, and various things, but I did make some changes to this so that we could demonstrate piston to valve clearance. They include the following. So I put light checker springs in place of obviously factory springs so that we can depress the valve and there's not a, load, a lot of load on anything. I also had to use the hydraulic roller lifter had to be converted to a solid roll lifter. And the reason that we had to do that is we don't want to de be depressing the plunger. It doesn't have a constant supply of oil. So we made it into a solid and that necessitated the next change, which was an adjustable push rod set. So we could take all the lash out of the valve train. So we had zero lash and we had no preload. Cause in this case, if we put preload on, we'd be preloading the light spring and not the lifter like you're supposed to. So we made those changes. The final change was we had to section the head gasket. Now we've sectioned our cylinder head and we've sectioned our block. So naturally I had to section the head gasket so that we could see in there and see exactly what's going on. Now it's time to assemble our piston the valve display motor. We installed our solid lifters, the tray, head gasket, cylinder head, open it down, so all the timing chain, bolt it in place. Look, she spins. Push rods, rocker stand and rocker arms, bolt it down, check the lash. Now let's talk about piston to valve. The question is, what is piston to valve clearance? Well, for us, when we're measuring it, we're trying to measure the closest point. At which point is the valve the closest to the piston? And how much of that clearance do we actually have? So this only happens really at one point. If we move the piston up, this is the exhaust valve. You can see the piston is following the exhaust valve up. It's getting closer, it's getting closer as the valve is closing. We get to its closest point about right there. And we can see that that's the piston to valve clearance that we need to be concerned with, with our little rocker and our test spring. We can push this down, we can actually measure how much piston to valve clearance we have right there. And that would tell us whether or not we could run this camshaft. Because the piston chases the exhaust valve up, it's gonna hit its closest point before top dead center, usually around 10 degrees before top dead center. And then we get into our overlap period. And then we're on the intake valve. The intake valve is usually gonna come in contact with the piston or get close to the piston, somewhere between TDC and usually 10 degrees after top dead center because the valve, intake valve, is chasing the piston down. One of the most common questions I get is, hey Richard, how much lift can I run with the available piston to valve clearance? And the answer is always the same thing. Actually, lift has very little effect on piston to valve clearance. It's really more about duration in that critical zone, plus or minus 10 degrees, you know, before or after top dead center. And I'll show you a graphic example of what I'm talking about and why lift really doesn't matter. So let's move our piston down. We know our intake valve is chasing the piston down. And we're gonna get our intake valve at maximum lift. So right there is maximum lift on the cam. And our valve is completely open and the piston is a good two and a half inches away from that valve at maximum valve lift. That's why we tell people valve lift really doesn't come into play with piston to valve. So the piston chases the exhaust valve up, but as we get near TDC, we get to the overlap point. That's where both the intake and the exhaust are both open. And I'm gonna show you exactly what that looks like. So let's take a look. So here's how we know both the intake and the exhaust are open. I've got a light back behind the intake. You can see if I take away the light, the light shining, that intake valve is not open by very much, but it is open. So if we take away the light, that's open. If I do the same thing to the exhaust, we can, you can see the light shining in the exhaust. So right now, this is overlap. Both the intake and the exhaust valve are both open on this camshaft. 
Okay guys, what'd you think? Piston to valve clearance, you have a better idea now what's going on and what the danger zones are and obviously why lift is not really very important. So we learned a lot of good things, but here's where I want you guys to chime in. Please let me know in the comments. What would you guys like to see tested now that we have this display motor and we can kind of see and measure what's going on? What would you guys like to see tested? Let me give you some examples. Hey Richard, what happens when we advance and retard camshafts? What happens to the piston to valve clearance? Should we test that? What happens if we run a sloppy stage one, two, and three camshaft? How much piston to valve clearance are we giving up by going up in stages? Those are the kind of things, but let me know. I'm sure you guys have other ideas. Let me know, but I'm Richard Lord, Please make sure to like, share, subscribe, you know, and ring the bell. Do all that stuff so you get notified when I do all this testing. Thanks for watching.